Hi guys, how are you? My name is One Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. So um, let's get started with this video, and I'll make it public. I'm cool like that. Um, Germany is the problem right now, and uh, China is slowing and has been, okay, but it's still growing. So let's talk a little bit about Germany. Germany has the size of two companies, Amazon and Microsoft. So the world is freaking out. Okay, I'm talking about market cap. The world is freaking out because uh, Amazon and Microsoft are not doing that well. Oh my God. Do you think that anywhere on the planet that anybody would give a shit if Microsoft and Amazon was not doing that well? It's a ridiculous assertion, okay? No, but you can understand it may spread throughout the Eurozone. <laughs> well, Denmark is doing fine, right? Don't start creating fantasies in your head, okay? Um, <clears throat> deal with probabilities, not possibilities. Anything could happen anytime. But uh, <clears throat> Germany slowing down uh, is definitely not a good thing. Okay, but it's not the end of the world. Negative rate, 16 trillion. Again, the biggest scam out there right now is that everybody thinks that because they see an inverted yield curve, they're seeing negative uh, interest rates, then, uh, and they're being told that, well, it's a big signal for a recession. It's coming. <laughs> when has anybody come out and and said, look, you know, we all have to run out and start selling because uh, CNN reported uh, that we're going to go, going to go into a recession or Fox or whoever the fuck, uh, CNBC, Bloomberg. Oh, we're going into recession. Okay, let's all go out and short. Your curve inverted. It's all over. It's a scam, guys. It's a, it, the market never works that way. Everybody on the planet understands it, sees it, yes, acknowledges it. But you got to remember, you have to remember. One, we did not pay interest on reserves, okay, last time we went into a recession. Two, we were not increasing deficits going uh into inverted yield curves. It's never happened. Never. Did we ever have a, an inverted yield curve after quantitative easing? Nope. Not that either. So you see, it is different this time. It's completely different this time. You're all being scammed if you're falling for this bullshit. You're all being scammed, one after the other. Don't fall for it. I'm telling you, don't fall for it. <laughs> Let's have some fun. The great unwinding has begun. That's what I'm calling this, the great unwinding. This is the beginning of the unwinding of the Trump rally, which started back in November after the election. We when you got clowns like uh, Normie boy here, uh, that is telling you how many times have we seen this setup? <laughs> and then a couple of days later, he's like, "Oh, oh market sell off warning, warning." <laughs> Whenever somebody like Mike is telling you warning, do the opposite. I guarantee you, you're gonna be right. Okay, guaranteed, you're gonna be right. If you are chasing all the way down here, you're screwed. I'm telling you, the time to short was when I shorted. Okay. Uh, and, and that's more for technical reasons. It, it doesn't mean the economy is over. We're going into recession. I have to short the market. You know, uh, anything can happen, of course. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. But uh, this was the time to short up here. You want to short down here now? <laughs> Be my guest. Go in short right now. No problem. Go and do it. See what happens. Okay. It's the same thing that happened back in 2008. The leading indicator. Oh, the leading indicator. Oh, this is the new golden 
thing and the leading indicator tells us and we know and I'm going to short the market and I'm going to do this and you know I am a stock man and you know, stand back nobody knows this I think that's watching this the leading indicator in 2008 was up here it, it wasn't like this do you know why because credit was not part of the leading indicator they revised it since they're like oh wait <laughs> we need to put fucking credit in there okay and now it looks like oh yeah look uh, it's perfect see this is the problem with people that oh i back tested this i back tested it i back tested it yeah you back tested it but you don't know what the fuck you're back testing uh this is looks great today but if you were in 2008 you never saw the leading indicator go negative you didn't and it's the same thing now with um the ten twos you know i'm keeping an eye on the ten twos the ten twos everybody's ten twos are they're gonna invert they inverted yesterday and they don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about they don't understand that it's not the same thing as the ten twos as before and lastly let's uh cover what uh, jim kramer tweeted out we need a 500 billion infrastructure bond right now, dude. We need it now. <laughs> what? The problem is Europe, right? That's where the, the fuckery is going on. Uh, and China, where, you know, things are slowing down. Uh, but they're still growing. So you can do a 500 billion infrastructure bond. That's great. Uh, high five. But we do have a labor shortage. And uh, fixing the U.S. that doesn't need fixing is not going to fix Europe nor Asia. The next thing I want to talk about, the, the $500 billion infrastructure bond, is that um, this is a pure MMT prescription where you get the private sector to buy bonds to build the infrastructure. And from there, the Fed backs it in case, I don't know, they don't build the fucking infrastructure, whatever, uh, and give them a little bit of interest. God knows, you know, the world is dying for more bonds, right? So why don't you get the private sector to pay for the infrastructure for the private sector? Because they have, an, and when I'm talking about the private sector, I'm talking about the, the top uh, 1%. Get them to invest into these bonds, create jobs, okay, good paying jobs, rebuild whatever infrastructure that you want to upgrade okay and then that would stimulate the economy and there's there's no need to increase the public debt doing this it also avoids this problem that you're going to privatize the infrastructure and then you're going to put little toll booths that are privately owned all over the place you know and now we're paying you know i don't know halliburton to use a highway that's a public highway, right? We're going to pay Halliburton or whoever. I don't know, Caterpillar. I don't know what the fuck, right? That doesn't make sense. So you avoid that problem. They get a the little uh, interest payment, and that's it. It's a very simple solution. So on the one hand, I'm glad to see that this, you know, uh, infrastructure bond is even being talked about. That's great. Very good. We don't need it right now. Uh, the economy is doing fine. Everything is fine. Uh, sure, we're going to have a, a pullback in the market, a correction. So what? We've had many of them in the past 10 years. Inverted yield curve is crazy, right? Trade wars. It's a trade war, you know. <laughs> the the thing about trade war uh, and the Fed cutting rates, it gives that signal to the market to kind of like freak out a little bit. And we're not talking about Wall Street. We're talking about companies so what do they do they kind of hold off things just like brexit remember when brexit came out um and everybody started like pulling back they're like oh what's going on what's going to happen next so there was a little bit of a slowdown and then when they figured out ah this is bullshit what happened everything picked up and went for two years without a problem but you know what they were telling you back then the brexit because people can't say brexit they say brexit you know what they were telling people back then? It's uncertainty. It's uncertainty. Yeah, it's uncertainty. Brexit, uncertainty. Nobody gives a shit about fucking Brexit, right? Now we're getting to the, you know, nitty gritty of things. Okay, now it's more valid. Absolutely. 
but uh, two and a half years ago, we give, or two years ago, we give this shit about Brexit. Br- it's the ten of the twos, man. It's the ten of the twos that are inverted. You know, that have inverted the ten of the twos. Mm. Stupid, 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 stupid. Anyway, you guys are all being scammed. Uh, you're gonna see it later. Uh, I promise you, you'll you'll see it. And, uh, you know, if I'm wrong, you can come back and say, oh, you were wrong, you were this, you were that. Not a problem. I accept full responsibility for what I say. I don't make excuses. Well, you don't understand, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, the ten of the twos, the Brexit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the last thing, uh, which was nice, uh, I forgot to talk about, is how core inflation is above 2%, uh, percent, right? And... Uh, like I said, the Fed should have not lowered rates. Okay, Fed controls two interest rates: the interbank, okay, and the discount window. Discount is when you go to the Fed and you borrow money. When you have the discount of let's say two percent, and you have the interbank Fed fund rate at two and a half percent, banks can go to the Fed, borrow from the Fed at two percent, lend to each other at you know, two and a half percent, and they make that uh, half a percent profit. That's a good thing, okay? That promotes uh, lending. When you cut the fund, Fed's fund rate um, down to 2.25, that starts to put pressure on banks and lending. So, in my view, it was stupidity for them to lower rates. Again, core inflation came in uh, 2.2 or whatever it came in. Okay, uh, it's above two, and uh, you know these kind of things is kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy where they're kind of f- trying to force a recession by scaring the uh, the businesses by all this nonsense, and people really don't realize what's going on. And just to take a, a moment to remind you uh, that we are literally from all-time highs, ooh, about six percent. Okay, 6% from all-time highs. So, you think the stock market is really worried about it right now? Doesn't look like it, does it? Right. Can we have a correction? Sure. Why not? We had this correction back here, right? Nobody saw it coming. Had a correction here. Might have another correction here. Had a correction here and here. But the 10 of the 2s, man. The 10 of the 2s. They're inverting. And my model is showing that... uh, you know, since 1960, everything, uh, you know, is spot on. It's spot on. As if we had the same fucking economy today as we did in 1960, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, 2010. It's all uh, like, wow. You know, maybe you don't understand economics. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that have changed since 1960. And uh, inverted yield curves is one of them. Leading indicator is another one. Right, but these are supposed to be solid, solid indicators that are going to predict the future. If it was that easy, we would all be fucking millionaires. Fuck that, billionaires. So I'm telling you, you guys are getting scammed, scammed. All right, that's it for this video. Take care. Uh, for you Bitcoin fans out there, I, I'll do uh, maybe a video tomorrow about Bitcoin. All right, take care. Bye bye.